Hello, good evening, everyone. So I'm pretty glad here to bring that message today. It's, uh, it's an opportunity for us to reflect on the risks. To live is a, we face risks on a daily basis, right? So based on that, to live is a risky situation. So let's see how we can handle that thing, how we can understand what is a risk. Basically, that's the message from today. And also with the, <clears throat> the understanding of the law of freedom. Not freedom as we are used to, to see the freedom that we've got in our anthem here in US. It's a different kind of freedom. Let's understand freedom because risk is a consequence of the freedom. Okay? So let's see this. Uh, Let's see that this message here that Emmanuel brought to us. Emmanuel is the, the mentor of one of the main uh, mediums of the, the 20th century, Francisco Cândido Xavier. And in one of the, the books that Chico Xavier brought to us, the book Patience, chapter five, he has a a brief message about risk. But this book was written, I think, 30 years ago, or maybe more than that. But take a look into this message here and see how it applies today. It's the same thing, right? If the world is now going through difficult times of crisis, what we are facing right now, we are still using masks here, right? And risks for the soul. Look at that, risks for the soul. He's not talking about risks for the, for the body, for the material life, but risks for the soul. These are also times for the most beautiful testimonies of understanding and love. So in the last year and in the first half of this year, I think all of us, we've got at least one example of this thing here, of love. Someone was supporting another one as a good example. He had bad examples as well, but don't count on them. Take a look into the good examples that we had during this pandemic situation. People helping each other, people bringing each other, right? Occasions for greater gifts of patience and devotion. Look at that. We are still using masks. This is, a, this is an exercise of patience, right? To use a mask. I've got asthma, so for me, it's, uh, it's something that why I'm using masks. I will explain why we are using masks today, okay? Forgiveness and a spirit of service. So if someone is bothering you because of the whole situation, be patient. Take a look into your situation. Pay attention to what this guy is bringing that risky situation to you. Sometimes it's because not because of him, it's because of the environment that he's embedded. So that's what we need to pay attention. It's a good, it's very, very, uh, let's say realistic, this message here. And it's still valid, right? 30 years back, right? It's still valid for sure. So if someone is coming here to listen about risks on stock exchange, stock, stock or financial, I'm so sorry, I'm not gonna talk anything about financial risks here, okay? We are gonna talk about our daily risks, our risks for the soul, okay? So references for today. So I like to bring references because if you wanna go deeper in this subject, so please take a look into those references right here. So a Spirit's book, main reference for all the, for all the teachings that we are going to provide in the, in the Spiritism. The Gospel according to Spiritism. Of course, this is, a, this is the message from Jesus, bringing examples for what we can read here. Practical examples in the Gospel, right? And those two books right here, so sorry, they only, uh, 
it only exists in the Portuguese edition only, but I translated some parts to you here in this, uh, in this presentation. This one right here, it's not a, a psychographic book. It's a book written by a doctor, right? And he make a re uh, he's making a relationship between the moral laws. We are going to talk about the law of freedom. It's one of the moral laws. And the mental health. It's very important because if we understand the, the moral laws and the relationship with the, with the mental, with the psychology in our mind, so that, that will make a lot of understanding for us in our actions, in our daily activities. And this book that I mentioned before, Patience, written by Chico Xavier, uh, by Emmanuel, okay? So now for us to disconnect from outside and bring us to this lecture here. So I would like to invite you for this, this beautiful song by Bob Marley. I think it was written in the 80s, maybe the beginning of the 80s. And uh, Bob Marley wrote that song uh, in the same week that he received a pretty bad news, right? He died, I think, two years after that song. But if you see the beauty of that song, pay attention to I never, I never paid attention to the, to the lyrics here. So pay attention to the lyrics here. And take a look, and I will make a challenge after we finish here. If you can understand, if you can see any connection here to what we are going to reflect today, okay? This music here is going to be performed by John Legend, and this performance was uh, was held in the Nobel Prize. Look at the the spiritual think behind this music. Let's hear it together. Tell 
Let me make a challenge to you here and see who can raise a hand and identify. We're going to talk about freedom here and risks. Is there any message here linking to that? Any sentence here? Can you identify here? Not the songs of freedom. Take a look at here. Any message here bringing to the law of freedom and risks? No? Anyone? Right here. Right here. Look at that message here. Emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Remember that I said before the, the song that Bob Marley wrote this music in the same day that he received a pretty bad news about his health. Imagine his mind when he started to wrote that song. He felt exactly like that. A mental slavery, he was captured. He didn't feel the freedom because he was not capable on, because his life was very limited at that time, right? He received a message that his life is gone. And he created that music, feeling that slavery in his mind, that he is locked. And he understood here that none but ourselves can free our minds. No one, just him. And he composed all the music before he passed away. Okay? So that's the beauty of this song, if you hear, not only here, songs of freedom, redemption songs. Redemption is that understand God, right? Understand God, forgive me, and move forward. That's the beauty of the song. Hope you enjoy it. So, think of that. Let's understand the law of freedom before when we understand the risks. If we could summarize the law of freedom into a single phrase, this is the phrase from, from Paul, Saul of Tarsus or St. Paul. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is beneficial, right? That's the summary of the law of freedom. If we could shorten it into a single phrase. I can do whatever I want, but think about that. Think about the, the impact of your acts of your actions. And if we bring that message into a popular quote, the sowing is free. However, harvesty is mandatory. So don't expect to seed bananas and gather oranges, right? We are seeding something, we are going to gather it later. So that's the law of freedom. 
if we could summarize. Any questions here? Let's go deeper. Remember that we talk about mental health, the Bob Marley song? What we have inside us that block this freedom, in terms of mental freedom? First of all, it's guilty, right? Sometimes we got guilty from this life and from the past lives. How do you deal with guilty? Forgiveness. Self-forgiveness. What is a self-forgiveness? Self-forgiveness is to understand that you are a spirit under evolution. So God set you here to make mistakes and to learn. So the guilty is something caused by, is a consequence of a mistake that you probably made. So if you practice your self-forgiveness, move forward. You got the freedom of the guilty, right? The next one, repressions. Repressions is more of a cultural. Depending on the, the environment that we are inserted, the repressions could be pretty high. And that will not give you the freedom. You have the right for the freedom. But the repression, the culture, the, the teachings, or whatever you receive it during your life, that will block your freedom. Emotional development. It's something that also will block your freedom. Because if you don't have emotional, everything is dangerous, everything is uh, it's horrible. You are blocking yourself to move forward. Make sense? Self-esteem, very important. If you don't love yourself, you are not free, right? Because if you don't love yourself, this will limit your actions. That will limit. It will not give you courage to move forward on something that you think that you're not capable to do. But actually, maybe you are capable to do. Actually, you are capable to do, right? So those four points here that uh, Dr. Sergio put in this book, that's very important for us to understand our limitations. The law of freedom. Right? Law of freedom seems that I can do whatever I want, but I've got repressions here that does not allow me to do whatever I want. Make sense? Okay. Are we free or are we not free? We can only be free if we can see ourselves while expressing ourselves. So don't use a mask. Express yourself. That means that you are free. You've got the freedom of speech, right? Mm -hmm. But are you speaking from the, your interior or are you sp speaking like an actor? It's up to you to identify. Self-knowledge will help you on identifying that thing. If you are trying to expose yourself differently from what, you, from what you have inside, that's not a freedom, right? And this will be expressed in words, action, and feelings. Be sincere with yourself and with others. That will express your freedom. Freedom is initially established within us. No one can give us freedom. No one. Only us can give freedom to ourselves. So we, I presented before the four topics that will give us some kind of blocking to our freedom. No one was doing that thing. The guilty, the repression, the self-esteem. And the fourth one was I hear? Let me make a test. Emotional. Emotional development. So does only you can fix that situation. Anyone cannot help you with the, the guilty. Just you, right? For example, 
So freedom is initially established within us since external freedom is useless, useless, if it does not exist internally. First of all, we need to relieve ourselves, right? Good reflection from Dr. Sergio here, right? Moving forward, let's go deeper in the law of freedom. The law of freedom is pretty well explained by, by Kardec in the Spirit's book, part three, chapter 10. The law of freedom. We can think, right? Try to block your thinking. You cannot block your thinking. You are constantly thinking and you can think whatever you want. No one here incarnated can listen to your thinking. We can guess, but we cannot listen. We cannot see your thinking. So we've got the freedom to think in whatever we want. But the freedom will bring us the conscience, consciousness, which reflects what? Responsibility, right? What does, this, what does this mean, responsibility? I can do whatever I want, as long as people, including yourself, mainly yourself, or institutions are not harmed. Remember the Pope, St. Paul, right? I can do whatever I want, but not everything is beneficial. So this responsibility is given to us by our consci consciousness, okay? And the sacred of free will. Free will is that I can do whatever I'm deciding to do, whatever I want to do. But you need to have, so you think, you've got the responsibility, and then you've got the free will. So, but what is the consequence of a free will? Free will is action or choices, the risks. Every action or every choice that we make, there is a risk. Could be small, could be high. It's up to us to understand. Make sense, this relationship between freedom and risk? So now let's understand what is risk. What is actually risk? Risk is from the, the Arab, Arabic word, same thing, risk. But if you translate risk or get the understanding in a dictionary, the risk, the Arabic one, this means something facing providence. Okay, Marcel, you bring me another word. What is providence? <laughs> Makes sense, okay? Something facing providence. But what is providence? Can someone say what is providence? What is providence? We hear that, I think all of us here heard that, that word before, right? Or not? What is providence? Come on. Let me bring. Not exactly. Providence is a God's protective care. Look at that Arabic. So something facing God's protective care, which means that God is helping you. So it's a risky situation. Right? So God is protecting you. So, or it's a timely preparation for future eventualities. But I prefer that thing right here. Something facing God's protective care. It's a risk. So in other words, risks refers to a proximity of co or contingency of a possible danger. Keep that word here. We're gonna be back to this word at the end, okay? So you see danger and risk. They are pretty correlated. So don't make a confusion on, so what is my risk to receive a lottery prize? This is not a risk, right? Because this is not a danger. To gain a lottery is not a danger itself. So don't confuse risk with probability. So to gain a lottery is just a probability. It's not a risk. 
risk is a little bit different. So, any questions here? This link from freedom to risk, everybody's fine here? Can I move forward? Let's quantify the risk. So can you tell me what is a high risk? What is a low risk? What is a medium risk? What's the risk that you can, I can afford that risk, I can go for that risk. Let's quantify that. Basically, risk is a probability between likelihood and impact. Impact is the consequence. Likelihood is the chance. It's getting confused, but it's getting clear here. Likelihood. Likelihood is the chance of that thing to occur, right? And the impact is the consequence. For example, if I put some, uh, put some kind of uh, a blind in my eyes, right, and try to cross I-4, What is the likelihood for me to have a pretty huge impact? It's pretty high, right? Pretty high. Likelihood is high, impact is high, which means that it's a high risk, right? If I cross the street in a traffic light, if I cross but without looking, if the car has stopped, the likelihood here could be high. If I wait for the, car to, for the car to stop, the likelihood will be lower. And the impact will be lower, why? Because the speed is lower, so the risk is low. If I cross the street in a traffic light. So that's the way we quantify risk, any kind of risk. Think yourself, a situation, give me an example, I can give you the likelihood and the, and the impact, okay? But now let's quantify. Marcio, it's okay, but it's quite fuzzy. I don't know how to measure if it's a high or low. Let's do one thing here. Let's create what we call a risk matrix. Here, we've got three levels of impact, low, medium, and high. I think for us, it's quite easy for us to identify if the impact is high, if the impact is low, if the impact is so-so. And the likelihood, three levels as well, from high to low. So if we have a risk that identified as a pretty high, but the likelihood is so-so, that will give me a high risk. If I have an impact that is low and the likelihood is low, my risk is so low. That's the way that you put it in your mind, you assess your risk any situation in your life, even the relationship with another one. I will show some examples later. Any questions here? How we quantify the risk? So this, this uh, matrix right here, it's not predefined. You can have different, for example, for you, even if the impact is low, but the likelihood is high, you can consider maybe a high risk. So that's what we call risk appetite. So each one of us has a different risk appetite. Sometimes you are okay on going to a high risk because my risk appetite is so high, but other people know I'm only going if it's a low risk. So you can feel that thing in the kids, teenagers. For them, I think all the risks are pretty low because they don't care itself, right? They do very dangerous stuff. It seems that they don't feel the, the risk. They don't have that thing in mind. Any questions here? How we quantify the risk? Okay, now let's manage the risk. We identify the risk, but how can we manage? How can we, how can we handle that risk? I need to manage, right? Risk management, it's basically this cycle right here which means identify. We just talk about identifying a risk, right? I've got a risk to get a, a disease, for example, this COVID situation, right? How can I 
reduce the likelihood using masks. The impact is the same because if I caught the COVID, maybe I could suffer or not. So using the mask will reduce the likelihood for a contagious situation. If I took the vaccine, I reduce the likelihood and the impact, then my risk is lower. Make sense? This is for everything, even with a relationship, with anyone. So if you are talking to someone and, it, and you feel that it's a risky situation, when you, when you deal with forgiveness, it's something that is risky for, your, for yourself. Maybe you can be hurt if you try to discuss some kind of forgiveness to someone. So that's a risky situation. How can you reduce the impact and likelihood? Think about yourself. Is this the right time to talk to this person about forgiveness? Maybe not. Maybe should I wait a week? Maybe should I ask someone to help me on talking to these people about, to this person about forgiveness? Right? You can make a balance between likelihood and the impact. So following that, that uh, this circle right here, identify a risk. So we know the risk. Assess the risk is when we quantify the risk. For me, it's a high risk situation. For me, it's a low risk situation. Or it's a medium, I can go. And to address and how we can treat the risk. Can I fix the risk? Can I reduce the risk? Can I avoid the risk? Can I transfer the risk? Those are the situations that we have to address a risk. Let's see each one of them. First of all, avoid. How can we avoid a risk? So, for example, if I don't know how to swim and there is a storm in the sea, why am I going to the beach? Don't go to the beach. Because if you don't know how to swim, you cannot enter and swim in a beach that high waves, right? That's dangerous. So avoid, don't go. Or go and stay in the, in the sand, get your bucket, and do yourself, right? Avoid is that situation. Don't cross the I-4 with a blinded eye. So if you don't cross, there's no risky situation. Transfer. Transfer is something that, let me give you an example. When you buy insurance policy, you are transferring the impact, not the likelihood, because you still can have an accident, a car accident, and, but you are transferring what? The impact, money-wise. Someone is gonna pay for the, so you're gonna reduce your risk. A situation in a relationship. So that's not a, a good thing, but there are some people that manipulate others to do something for him. What this guy is actually doing, this guy is transferring the risk. Instead of him facing the situation, he's manipulating people to do something for him, and that people that will do this action for him will be the people in risk. So I will not give any examples, but I think each one of us here can give one example of manipulating people, right? I don't like to say, but politicians play like that, right? They manipulate people to do something for them because they are not facing the risk for them. That's not a good thing. The other thing to treat the risk, that's a good thing. How can we reduce the risk? How can we bring the risk to a lower level that I can accept the risk? And the last one, it's something, the risk is there. I cannot do anything but just accept the risk. So let's see how we can handle those two situations here. This one, it's obvious. If there is a risky situation, don't do that. This one is to transfer to someone to pay you or to 
transfer the risk to another one. So let's see how we can mitigate the risk. So based on what we discussed and based on the, this matrix right here. So let me hear from you. How can we reduce the risk? Ideas. What I'm going to present here, it's so obvious that you're going to, maybe you're going to, what this guy is saying here. So, but let's think about the obvious here. How can we reduce the risk? Any ideas? Let, let's go. Stay in the green. Hmm? Stay in the green. Uh, <laughs> right here, right? Yeah. In the low. Yeah, but how can, you've got a high risk. How can you move the high risk to a low risk? How can you do that? It's a high risk. It's a high risk situation. You're going to handle forgiveness with someone. How can you reduce the risk for that situation? Prevent. What? Prevent it? No, it's more obvious than that. <laughs> Much more obvious than that. Come on. See, from high to low, or whatever, from high to medium, whatever. I'm gonna, I need to reduce the risk. It's so obvious. Reduce the impact and or reduce the likelihood. <coughs> right? Obvious. If I reduce the impact, I'm going to move right here. If I reduce the likelihood, I'm going to move right here. Obvious. Right? So obvious. But think about if you've got a relationship. Forgiveness is a good example. You're going to handle that. That's a risky situation because you cannot control the other's mind. Right? And you need to deal with the forgiveness. Forgiveness is something not only for the other side, but for you as well. So can you identify the impact of the situation? Can you identify the likelihood? So how can you identify the impact? How am I going to approach the other person about forgiveness? If you approach straightforward, maybe the impact will be so high that we will increase the risk. But if I perform an approach that it's, let me talk frankly, let me talk open mind and let me do something, maybe that will reduce the impact. And the likelihood, the likelihood will be, is this a good day to talk about that? Think about that. So if you play with likelihood, if you play with impact, if you reduce, you're going to reduce the risk. Everything in life, if you think about these two vectors here, you can make a balance and make a, a reasonable risk. Make sense? So obvious, right? So obvious? So obvious all? Just look at the table. Reduce any of them, you're going to reduce the risk. So think about crossing the street, as I mentioned before. The risk is to cross the street because you could be hit by a car. That will have a huge impact on you, depending on the speed. So how can you reduce that risk? Likelihood, cross the street in a traffic light. The impact, wait for the car to stop. And then you cross, it's a low risk. Make sense? OK. Toughest one, risk acceptance. How can we accept the risk? Tough, right? Sometimes you need to move forward. You cannot stop, you need to move forward. Let's read that message from Emmanuel in this book, Patience. In the present, you see the book was written about 30, 35 years ago. In the present, Today, the man prevents himself against the lack of food values, stocking first useful goods. It defends the roads, warding off the risk of accidents or promoting, promote, promotes vaccination, frustrating the outbreak of epidemics. With this in mind, let us develop the imperative exercising strength Understanding, patience, and solidarity. 
that's the way that we are going to accept the risk. Strength, you, not, you must be courageous. You must be strong. Sometimes you need to face that. Go ahead. Okay? Be confident on yourself. Talk to your mentor. Understanding the situation. Forgiveness. If you understand what caused that issue, maybe that will help you on accepting that risk on talking to someone about forgiveness. Right? Patience. It is what it is. Let's go. Let's accept the risk and move forward. Don't stay with the mental slavery. I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do. That's a mental slavery, as presented by, by Bob Marley. Right? Move forward. Solidarity. Sometimes you need a, someone to help you. Sometimes you need to help someone. Offer your hand to help someone to accept that risk. A disease treatment, it's a risky situation. Sometimes the, the person does not have the capability to decide what she or he would do. Offer yourself to help on that. You're going to make the other person accept the risk and move forward. Right? Sometimes you can see the other in a mental slavery. Help him. Right? That's the way we can accept risk. Any question here? Four types of risk treatment. Four types. First one, avoid. Second one, transfer. Third one, reduce. Fourth one, accept. Right? Million dollar question here. Look at that. Look at the, the intelligence that Kardec used here to identify. Look, that's the question. So God is good and he is just, right? No exceptions to any one of us here. He will help any one of us. So why God, the providence, right? God's protection is making us incur dangers. Remember that we talked in the very beginning the definition of risk? Risk is a potential facing of danger. Here's the risk, right? What is the intent of providence in making us incur dangers? He's good. Why he is bringing us into a risky situation? Why? What's the answer here? A million dollar end. Come on. What is the answer here? Why God is letting us face a risky situation, a danger? Why? That's the answer. That's the answer. <laughs> Through the dangers you incur, God reminds you, right, of your weakness and the fragility of your existence. It's like a father letting the kid, when the the baby start to walk, sometimes you let the kid walk by himself, right? He will feel the, the danger of walking and falling down, standing up. So if we examine the cause and the nature of the risk of the danger, so we got, and now we've got the knowledge and the reflection on the danger, on the risk that we're going to face, we will see that the majority, look at the answer from the spirits, the majority of the cases, majority of the cases, the consequences are effects of some wrong committed or a duty neglected. We are causing the risks. But God is leaving to us. Go there. Try it. Fix it. So God is pretty much smarter than us. Right? He's not putting us in a dangerous situation if it's not for educational purposes. God does warns you to reflect and correct your wrongs. Important thing, right? 
Every time we are facing a risky situation, forgiveness, that's what I'm saying all the time. What is the cause of that? What I should do internally to help me on dealing with forgiveness? Most of the time, most of the cases, right? It's something that I made wrong. And God is alerting me, is warning me that fix that. That's the beauty of the Spiritism. When we come to things that we got no idea, now we can reflect and we can understand. That's the beauty. It's not imposing anything to us, it's just reflect. Think about the cause and the effect, right? A risk is a situation that we are preparing for a bad effect. But how can you handle that thing? Now we've got the, the understanding. And the link between the law of freedom, which is a divine law, the risk situation, and why God is leaving us on our own to face the, those risks. Any questions here? No? Fine. So that's the conclusion of Dr. Sergio about the law of freedom. Freedom is a natural law. We know that. I can think whatever I need. And our destiny, therefore, is to be free. Mental slavery. Something is blocking me to be free. But our destiny, the perfection, we are going to be fully free. All the events that life give us serve to little by little conquer new resources. Exactly what uh, Kardec presented in the question 855, right? Risk situations, a consequence of the freedom. So bad actions could have a consequence and the consequence could be a risky situation, right? Any questions here? Some opportunity, I think we've got time. No? So I appreciate your attention. Peace for everyone, okay? Thank you.